Speaking about the middle guys, what about banks? What's the future of traditional banks? How do they need to be transformed? Or shouldn't we transform them at all? Is it pointless? Is it useless? These are the questions for the next speaker. He creates digital banking strategies and helps fintechs to navigate in the banking industry. And he tries and tries very hard to identify innovators and disruptors in this particular area that we are interested in. He tries to put together the fintechs that are opening and coming with new ideas with high caliber investors. Ladies and gentlemen, Frank Schwab. Hello. Using your words, technology is driving the banking industry. From your perspective, what is pushing the banking industry back? What we learned over the day, the technologies are, let's say, going faster and faster is the customer um, experience mm -hmm. and the way customers and retail customers use technology. And actually, this is now accelerating. We speak for 20 years for the disruption of the banking industry, but now it's here. So what's the thing or someone or something that is pushing it back right now? What's the thing that is pushing the banking industry back and not forward? Yeah, we, we, we will see. I have brought all the examples. There are 10,000 uh, fintechs out in the world who uh -huh. make the life difficult for traditional banks. Perfect. Frank, the floor is yours. Thank you. So banking is not very innovative, um, at least over the last 20 years. Uh, and retail banking especially. Uh, in Germany, there is only one bank over the last 20 years which did take advantage from the internet from my point of view. If you look at the customers, they have won from two to nine million the profits they made um, from a loss at the beginning to a significant uh, recurrent uh, profit. And most interesting, they have only fourfold the people they need to basically tenfold the business from deposit business as well as from the loan business. At least the loan business is an area where banks still make some profits. But at the same time, uh, there were a couple of companies uh, and online brokers, uh, which you may have heard or never may have heard. They started also around uh, 2000 to take advantage. What they all have in common, that they had no business model. So taking down the cost for a transaction for buying uh, a share on the stock market and not taking interests or provisions on keeping your shares in a depot, that is not a good idea. So it's important also for the new startups in banking to think about how they can create a sustainable business. Actually, we may argue there is only one company, probably the first fintech in the world where we all use as of today. So who is a PayPal user? Yeah. So they made an impact on global banking, taking advantage, let's say, to solve payment in the Internet. And if I would have been here five years ago and told you that PayPal's market capitalization is threefold of Deutsche Bank's, which about 12 years ago was the biggest bank of balance sheet globally, you would have laughed at me. And somehow the experts don't get it. So this is a list of the top 100 banks globally. I have had a look 
at the top 20 and there is no PayPal on it. So actually, PayPal is a bank and it would be under the top 20, but analysts just don't see it. Of course, um, this is a professor with a very nice quote uh, back in 1929. He said, stock prices have reached what it looks like a permanently high plateau. And actually, if you look at the time, it was. It was the plateau. But of course, if you look as of today, you see a significant increase. So what want I say? It's very difficult to predict the future. Nonetheless, I want to share with you my view, what I already can see, and how banking will be disrupted going forward. So we are still in 2018, and we still, the traditional large banks run that kind of infrastructure. Basically, each technology of each and every decade in parallel, which makes it really difficult to maintain. At the same time, everybody now uses mobile phones. No news here. So this, for example, is the thumb of a 14-year-old girl. Uh, she's doing 1,000 WhatsApp a day. So, so the usage of the mobile phone actually has a physical impact uh, on our body. So much more flexible, not like mine, which is some kind of stiff, right? Um, and that will not go away. The, the new behavior, taking your Uber, using Airbnb, that's here for stay. And on top of that, banks face a new level of interest which they have never seen before. Traditionally, if you are a board member of a bank, you go in bed in the evening, you wake up in the morning, and your first million profit on interest is in your account. There's no other business like that where you do nothing just because people have their loans with you or they have your deposits. But as you see, that's not true anymore. And together with the legacy of the IT, the new customer behavior and the new interest curve, the profits will shrink and shrink and will make the life of traditional banks very difficult. As we can see, more than 10,000 new startups all over the world trying to get a piece of traditional banking. So let's have a look what they are actually doing. So you may have heard of crowd and crowd finance and crowdfunding. So I'm an angel investor of Capilendo. What do they do? If you are a business, they help you getting a loan, but not from a single bank or a single person, but from the crowd, you and me. So I'm from Germany, first league soccer, that's Hertha BSC Berlin, of the capital, the, the first league soccer team. They have financed their digital strategy, so they needed one million to, to, to do technical, let's say, analysis on their players, how much do they run. And they said, okay, that's our digital strategy and we will fund the one million uh, also with the crowd. So we prepared this crowd finance and on a Saturday afternoon at 2.30 p.m., we introduced it to the fans into the soccer arena. 
And at 2.48, I tried to, by myself to participate and to lend 1,000 euro to Hatta BC. And actually, it did not work. Because what happened? They got the million in nine minutes and 23 seconds. So now think of a traditional bank on a Saturday afternoon giving a loan to a business in nine minutes and 23 seconds. Actually, all banks in Germany are closed on a Saturday. And a typical loan process for a business is probably something like four to six weeks. Another example of the crowd is you may have an investment strategy where you buy stocks on the exchange. And you share this with the community. And with the community, they see what you're doing and they can follow you and they can copy your strategy. And if enough people following my strategy, and if I'm a successful investor, I not only earn through my investment, I earn through my followers as well. Peer-to-peer. -peer. We have learned about the blockchain peer-to-peer. -peer. Traditionally, banks give loans to others. Um, this bank, at Fedor Bank, they enable their customers to provide loans to other customers out of the Fedor Bank community. And they do it in a very transparent way. So that's my profile at Fedor Bank. Fedor does score me in several attributes. I'm a networker. How do I contribute to the Fedor community? How do I pay back? And this is transparent and open for all other bank customers, Fedor Bank. And of course, that helps that others give me their money. And the bank does not earn on interest. In that case, at least they earn for commission. And crypto. Of course, everybody has heard of Bitcoin. So let's think about what it worth. If we think Bitcoin is like digital gold, we have 183 million kilogram of gold currently available, and it becomes more and more expensive to dig it out on Earth. And we have roughly 60 million coins available right now. So if we look at the respective market valuation, the fair value of one Bitcoin would be more than $400,000. If we believe the concept of Bitcoin is as digital gold. And this is factor 70. And we will learn it will not go away. The cryptocurrencies will not go away anymore. They are more than 1,200. I think by now it's more than 1,600. Uh, and in more than 6,000 markets. This development will not go away. And if you look at how big it is, currently we're around between five, 400 and 500 billion dollars. But if you compare that to all money available, which is $80 trillion, we are less than 0.5% of the overall money market. World Economic Forum says by 25, 2025, we may see up to 25% of all money value into blockchain-based businesses. So we have heard about blockchain. We just learned what it is. We have seen applications. I give you one example where we see crossing industry. Yeah, you might laugh now. This may be the next Facebook. So this is Steamy, the platform where you as an author are paid for your high-value content. Facebook today, you give all your content. Facebook makes profit to advertisement. So if you are a high-value content provider, you get just nothing. 
Here, your reader attributes to you a little amount of steam, which is the virtual currency here, so the cryptocurrency behind the system. And of course, in exchanges, you can transform steam into real dollar, real euro, or even into Bitcoin, if you believe it. And that may be an example where going forward, enabling a cryptocurrency, crossing it with a, let's say, new platform for content sharing, uh, which may change the future. And if somebody thinks that goes away, look at the investment into that space over the last couple of years, um, millions and hundred millions going into this technology year by year, last year even higher, this will not go away. AI, so a very simple example. In a traditional service desk of your company, what is the majority of calls in your IT service desk? 50% of more the calls, what are they are about? You forget your password. <laughs> That's what you, what you hear if you are calling your IT service desk in your company. You forgot your password. And of course, with voice recognition, you don't need that anymore. There's no need that people actually help you to reset your password. That can be automated. And that's the first step. And the next step is that you will start automate your investment decisions. And there are already companies out there who give you simple examples where robots behind, in behalf of you, do the investments. And for the mass of the people, that will be the best and cost-efficient and the cheapest way to invest. Of course, as in other industries, we see now a lot of startups, alone in Germany, more than 24. Most of them will die. That's the destiny of startups. But of course, one of them will maybe be the next ING. With mobile, in banking, we see the first mobile banking only banks. And this is an example I'm invested in. They offer banking for small, medium e enterprises, combining the accounting, the banking, and the tax, and that on the mobile phone and the iPad. For techies at the beginning, and as is this rough for others. And you even can now open your accounts at home with your mobile phone. Stop. No need to go to a bank for legitimization anymore. And it goes further and further. If you're a bank and you want to start a bank in another country, there's no need to build the technology by yourself anymore. You can buy it out of the cloud. So there is a startup, Mambu, they have already more than 130 installations where they provide to bank the basic computer sets and the basic applications to run a bank. And why do they offer that? Because you can reduce the cost significantly. Because you remember the picture at the beginning? Each technology from each decade. This is how an efficient technology looks like these days. One technology stack, full stop. And there's another piece of technology called API, Application Programming Interface. Who knows what that is? OK, some do. What Wikipedia and text is to us is an API to a computer. It's an interface that a computer can read output of computer. 
And a lot of e-commerce businesses did grow on that a open APIs. And in banking, um, we have created, when I was at Fedor Bank, an open API, which looks like that, even easy to understand, get user data. You don't need to be a coder to understand. So we did use these open, let's say, interfaces to others application services like Capilento, you see, like Bitcoin, like Smava, like gold money where you can buy and sell gold online. All of these are own businesses by itself, but they open their, their businesses via APIs to others. And if you bring that together, from a customer's perspective, that's my account at Feeder, where I can buy from gold money, precious metal, where I can do social lending with others, where I can buy foreign currencies. And like that, more than 20 partner products, even Bitcoin, can be managed out of my traditional banking account. So all in all, we will see new banking products delivered as new services by these new technologies. Is this all hype? No. 36 billion were invested into 16 alone. In all facets and all business areas of banking. And what do they change? They are eliminating all manual processes, all paper-based stuff. They run their businesses on 100% percent straight through processing. No media break, no paper anymore. And they deliver the service in less than 60 seconds. So even the Capilento investment can be done online in less than 60 seconds, including settlement on a Sunday. As we build a kind of an emergency loan for the German market at Fidor Bank, where at the Sunday afternoon, as being a retail customer, you can ask for a loan and you will get it in 60 seconds. So IT redefines banking, and that's the reason why I believe the change will happen now. Because you see traditional banks running on significant IT cost per customer, and you see e-commerce competitors and new fintechs on a total new level. The same is true for the customer acquisition costs. So a traditional bank for a retail pay customer pays up to $250 per customer. A fintech can do that for five. Where do we head? So banking will still give loans and credit as they will offer, let's say, investment and asset opportunities as will enable payments. But I would say typical traditional branch banking will die. We will see that the attackers will first win the customers on the account and on the payment, and from there they will go to assets, loan, and deposits. And we have seen PayPal doing that, adding on new features every day. So if you look at it as a consultant, 
if you look at legacy technology and new technology as the banking services, traditional ones and new ones, the ones who do not change themselves on technology, on product side, they are destined to fail. You may run on your legacy system, given to your size, as a financial infrastructure provider due to the fact you have huge balance sheets. So there is something, an area where traditional banks can survive, but not all of them. And of course, you can identify niches to go to. Um, but I'm pretty sure that we will see over the next 12 years uh, successful disruptors entering the market um, with new technologies and new services. Usually I speak to bankers only, and they say, ah, that will not happen tomorrow. A and we have seen that in the morning as well, right? At the beginning, nothing happens. Um, but is there enough preparation? Bandwidth does not cost anything anymore, right? And you have a significant amount of networks player starting to use the service, then it goes much faster than you think. Uh, for the startups, um, I believe we now see the future and the disruption in banking. Um, but nonetheless, it will be very challenging. So the idea and the talent will maybe only 1%. But it will be also for the new startups and the challengers uh, a lot of hard work um, to actually do the disruption. Now I am at the end. Thank you very much. Frank, please share your experience with us. What do you usually? Top managers of traditional banks tell you when you show them these slides. What's the reaction? Um, most of them laugh at me. Huh? And they don't believe what I'm telling. And how many of them hire you? Uh, actually, some of them start hiring me as a yeah. speaker. Oh, as a speaker. <laughs> uh, and, and, but when it becomes, or when we go to potential project work, that's fine as long as it does not interfere their real business. <laughs> Can they define the real business? Yeah, what they do traditionally, meaning um, lending large amounts of money to large corporations. Uh -huh. That's. I would say the typical banker also when it comes to investment banking, financing large programs, governments and others. And they think that will not hit, that would not hit them. And that's it? Most of the time, yes. We see now that they start investing a small amount of their money here and there. But the stuff I see still is some pet projects, in the ivy tower <laughs> frank schwab thank you very much thank, frank. You. thank you thank you, thank you.